beehive thefts are on the rise and beekeepers turn to anti-theft technology. A teacher fed her students cupcakes with sperm inside. And a man divorced his wife in record time after she chose the wrong wedding song. These are the weird stories for Tuesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. I'm Jonesy. I'm in Los Angeles. Where are you? Beekeepers turn to anti-theft technology as hive thefts are on the rise. For a few frenzied weeks a year, beekeepers from around the United States truck billions of honeybees to California to rent them to almond growers who need these honeybees to pollinate the state's most valuable crop. I didn't know almonds were California's most valuable crop. I live in California. I thought... uh. Wine was our biggest export. It's not exactly a crop. Well, no, technically it's a grape, so it is a crop. I do see a lot of almond trees when I drive up the coast, though, for sure. I had no idea. Also, you could rent honeybees like this. This is a fascinating industry. Let's find out a little bit more and why these farmers need anti-theft devices. People just stealing hives, it seems like. It says, as almond trees begin to bloom blanketing entire valleys in white and pink flowers, so begin beehive thefts that have become so prevalent that these beekeepers are now turning to GPS tracking devices, surveillance cameras, and other anti-theft technology to protect their precious colonies of bees. Not just California, hive thefts have actually been reported elsewhere in the country. Most recently, three hives containing about 60,000 bees were taken from a grocery chain's garden in central Pennsylvania. They happen at a large scale and uniquely in California this time of year because bees are most in demand during the largest pollination event in the world. This is the largest pollination event in the world? Pollinating these almond trees? Wow, that's unbelievable. huh? And it turns out this event is happening right now. In the past few weeks, 1,036 beehives worth hundreds of thousands of dollars were reported stolen from orchards in California. The largest heist involved 384 beehives that were taken from a field in Mendocino County, prompting the State Beekeepers Association to award and offer a $10,000 reward for information leading to the recovery of these 384 beehives. We have a quote here from the uh, Beekeepers Association president. It's hard to articulate how it feels to care for your hives all year, only to have them stolen from you. Can you imagine? Um, that's a, <laughs> that's a, I don't know why I did that. I just thought it'd be funny. Uh, now, I'm extremely curious. How do you steal hundreds of beehives? Uh, I guess you just, do you steal the actual trucks that the beehives are in? Like, well, let's get some details. It says thefts usually happen at night when no one is in the orchard and the bees are back in their hives. Okay, so they let them out during the day and then they come back at night. Uh, the rustler is usually a beekeeper or someone familiar with the transportation of bees. Here's a, a quote from someone named Rowdy J. Ooh, Rowdy J. That's a cool name. Sounds like a wrestler. Uh, or porn star. Um, more often than not, uh, these people steal to make money and they leave the bees to die, unfortunately. Oh, I see. They're stealing the honey? They're leaving the bees to die? Oh, that's terrible. It says a tightening supply of bees and soaring pollination fees, jump, jumping from less than $50 to rent a hive two decades ago to as much as $230 per hive this year, are likely motivating beekeepers to go rogue. The demand for bees has steadily risen over the last 20 years as popularity of the healthy, crunchy almonds turned California into the world's biggest almond producer. Accordingly, the amount of land used to grow almonds has more than doubled to an estimated 1.3 million acres. Uh, I also heard that almonds um, take up a lot of water. Like they're very much uh, water suckers. So It takes all these bees and all this water to make almonds. Guys, what are we doing here? All right? Yeah. Almonds, eh, you could do without them, I think. They kill me, but like, I'm just wondering, are they that great? I'd say less almonds, more pineapples. Pineapples are amazing. Oh, man, I could eat a pineapple a day. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Pineapples are the greatest. 
I don't, I don't know if they grow here. Where do they grow? I know nothing about anything. It says here, beekeepers have had to keep up with this growth by providing an ever-increasing proportion of the nation's available stock of hives. This year, a survey of commercial beekeepers estimated it would take 90% of honeybee colonies in the U.S. to pollinate all the almond orchards. That's too many, man. You're taking up all the bees, almond farmers. Come on, man. Mix it up. More wine. What the hell? Grow some other shit. How about more raspberries in the world? My goodness, there's not enough raspberries. I mean, honestly, think about your own life. How many times do you encounter raspberries? It's very rare, and they're delicious. They have strawberries everywhere, sure. Raspberries, not so much. We need more raspberries. I'm going to contact the Agricultural Committee and let them know how I feel about this. They don't care. Now, the rest of this article goes into detail on some of the uh, security measures that are being taken by the bee industry. It mentions a tech startup called Bee Hero, which equips hive boxes with a GPS-enabled sensor. And basically rounds up the sort of losses that these beekeepers uh, have to suffer each season because of stolen hives. Uh, we get the point. Uh, and it's nice to learn about such things. I actually give a damn about bees. I, I really do. Um, and it's a concern. You know, you, you see articles all the time about the disintegration of bee colonies uh, and there's of course the emergence of that uh, what is that killer hornet that giant hornet the mega hornet anyways it destroys complete hives is what this thing does so and uh, I've been following stories about the you know uh, scientists and whatnot trying to get a grip on that whole phenomenon as well to control it so it's a concern of course Murder hornets, that's what they're called, murder hornets. But they don't murder people, they murder in, in complete bee colonies is what they do. Just uh, they, they look like they would murder you, though. They look like they would stab you in the chin and then fly off with your baby. They're huge. A teacher fed her students cupcakes seasoned with her husband's sperm. No! Say this isn't true, that someone would do this. Oh, you can't trust anybody anymore. You can't trust any food that some, someone gives you. Lace and cupcakes with sperm. Someone told me a story recently about a group of people that they knew had dinner over this lady's house. And this lady decided to just grab some wild mushrooms out of her yard or, I don't know, some behind her house or whatever. And she put them in a dish and a bunch of people ate this dish and, like, uh, had liver failure. Like, one of them died. Can you imagine? Oh, you got to just make your own stuff, man. Make your own sperm-free cupcakes at home. That's my <laughs> advice. It's a very sick story. I'm not even sure I should do it, but uh, all right, let's let's get into it. Uh, <laughs> it says here this school teacher was sentenced to up to 41 years in prison after serving her students cupcakes seasoned with her husband's sperm. Her name is Cynthia Perkins. Uh, she claimed she was not guilty of the crime at first, of course, because that's what you do. You get a lawyer and you say, "I didn't do that," even though everybody knows you did it. Uh, the atrocities were perpetrated by this woman, age 36, and her ex-husband, Dennis, a former high-ranking SWAT officer? What the hell? This guy's a SWAT officer? He's in cahoots with his wife to put sperm in cupcakes and then hand them out to unsuspecting children. Wow, you're twisted, bro. You're twisted. Like, you gotta be a special kind of evildoer to just come up with this cockamamie plan. Like, of all the things you could do to screw with people, this is, like, this is very off-the-charts bizarre, in my opinion. <laughs> like, these people need to be taken away, and bye-bye. Um, it says here, this woman pled guilty to charges of, uh, oh my goodness, this child pornography production, second-degree rape, mixing toxic materials. Yeah. This lady agreed to testify against her criminal boyfriend, Dennis, in return for a plea agreement. Uh, they're always cutting, cutting deals. Uh, uh, I'll, we'll take forty years off your uh, off your sentence if you tell us who gave you the sperm, lady. Uh, Perkins was arrested for the first time in twenty nineteen. She sued for divorce. She claimed that her her then husband coerced her into doing these heinous crimes. Nobody coerces you into bringing cupcakes to the. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> like, there's a lot of steps here. You know, there's some like activities that are completely spontaneous, 
Like, I know you pick up the gun and fire it. Okay, that takes an instant. That very little planning. Sometimes I can understand maybe you're coerced into doing some spontaneous, heinous act. But this is a lot of planning. You got to bake things. Really, Cynthia? <laughs> you bake things all day long. It's just a lot of time and preparation. Then you put frosting on it. I mean, two kinds of frosting, if you know what I mean. Horrific. I don't know how you can be a parent right now, guys. I don't know how you do it. You can't send them to school with a clear conscience. You don't know what's going to go on. There's either somebody going to show up there, a dangerous individual, with the threat of physical harm, or the own teacher's going to dose your kid with some bodily fluids that came out of her former SWAT husband asshole. <laughs> it's like, how do you handle this? Oh, man. I don't know how you do it. Parents, I do not know. Homeschool. It's got to be homeschool. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A man divorced his wife in record time after her song choice at the wedding sparked a family fight. A man divorced his wife after she requested and then danced to a particular song at their wedding and caused a huge family row. The couple have set a new record for the shortest marriage after calling it quits following an argument during their celebrations in Baghdad. Uh, the woman requested... A song, it's a Syrian song called Mese Tara by the artist Lamas Khan. The title translates to I am dominant or I will control you. Uh, I had to go find this song on YouTube, get a little dose of this. It's a, it seems like a nice dance track, actually. Let's play some for you. Just turn up the volume, pump up the volume. Oh, wait for the drop. Oh, this is hot shit. Oh, man, I love it. Oh, I could totally get down with this song, wearing some real loose clothing. Okay. Uh, here's some of the lyrics here. Yes, I'm dominant. You're my piece of sugar. Oh, it sounds like a love song, really. I don't know why you'd be angry at this. She's saying you're her piece of sugar, bro. It says, as long as you're with me, you'll be under my command. Ooh, okay, all right. It's like very, <laughs> this is some BDSM stuff. This is, these are the words of a dom, apparently. Uh, then it says, I'm arrogant, I'm arrogant. <laughs> Straight up. You, you are arrogant. Uh, it says, you will be ruled under my strict instructions. I will drive you crazy if you look at other girls on the street. <laughs> Yes. Ah, this is these are the words of a woman who cares. Why wouldn't you enjoy this? Yes, I'm dominant. You're my piece of sugar. As long as you're with me, you'll walk under my command. You will not look at other girls in the street. <laughs> hey, yeah, man. Okay. Now, admittedly, these lyrics are a little scary, but I mean, don't you want to marry a woman who gives a damn, right? Someone who'll fight for you on the street. If you look at another woman, she's just going to punch you in the face. Don't you want a woman that gives a damn? <laughs> the bride was reportedly dancing to the song and enjoying her wedding. And I'm sure she was dancing in a very sultry, sexy manner because those kinds of songs, man, you can really get down. Like, that's a. I'm just imagining the sort of dancing that would go on, sort of like that belly dance kind of style. Maybe not. Just in my head, it seems like it would be a sexy dance for a woman. Yeah, and you just got to kind of ignore the lyrics while it's going on. <laughs> just appreciate. Yeah, the dance. The groom's family were not very impressed with this, and it resulted in a huge row between the two families. Um, this is not the first time that this has happened. And the song, this particular song, led to another divorce in Jordan last year as well. Now, this song is very contentious. Classic wedding songs, 
should be considered, like Can't Help Falling in Love by Elvis, At Last by Etta James. I'm going to look up the number one wedding song for 2021. Can you guys guess what the most popular wedding song of 2021 was? Uh, it says here, All of Me by John Legend. And uh, there's a list of the top 10 wedding songs for 2021. On that list is Africa by Toto, which I never would have guessed would be an appropriate wedding song. Really? Africa? I blessed the rains down in Africa. Bohemian Rhapsody is also on the list. Come on now. These aren't wedding songs. I don't know. Any of you uh, incorporate a strange, weird wedding song in your wedding? I'd be playing some weird stuff at mine. Like, how can we dance while the earth is turning? Bum, bum, bum. How can we sleep while the beds are burning? That'd be a strange <laughs> song to come out to. <laughs> People would be like, huh? Okay, okay. Some people love the Weird AF News podcast. Notice I didn't say everyone because not everyone loves it. As you know, I get some bad reviews sometimes. <laughs> some people hate it. Uh, so if you'd like to give the podcast a review, that'd be extremely helpful. You can do so on Amazon or um, Apple Podcasts, also known as iTunes. And there's now a rating system on your Spotify. You can just click on the podcast and give it five stars. You can't write anything. You can just give it five stars, which is pretty helpful. Got some uh, five stars on there. Appreciate that. Uh, if you'd like to support the show uh, with a little bit of cash because you're rolling in the ducats right now, you're, you're heavily invested in crypto <laughs> and you just want to support a guy that records in a closet. I don't know. I don't know what you're into. Maybe you do. Anyways, check out my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Weird AF News. You can throw Jonesy a couple bucks a month. Uh, and uh, the Patreon opens up a whole other world of content for you because I put a lot of stuff in there. Weird stuff that I come across in my personal life. Stuff I'm interested in on the side. Put that in there. Follow-up stories. Florida stories that didn't make the podcast. Stories that are kind of, they work better as a visual. You know, maybe there's a video accompanying it or a photo of some sort. It's like, in other words, something you had to see. I'll put it in the Patreon. So it's just more weird AF content for you if you're into that stuff. Uh, you can also join the Patreon by going to my website, weirdafnews.com, which was built and paid for by the patrons, my lovely supportive patrons. Uh, many of which have their name on my wall here in the closet. So if you join the page, Patreon, I will put your name on the wall, uh, a.k.a. the studio, a.k.a. Weird AF News headquarters. I don't know if you're familiar, but yeah. Anyways, that's those are some of the perks you get if you join the Patreon. And you also, you know, it's just a cool thing to do, right? Brag about that at parties and stuff. Like, just like, hey, how was your week? Oh, dude, it was great. I joined the Weird AF News Patreon. And then, you know, just watch them look at you with confusion. <laughs> That's a fun time. If you'd like to email me, it's funnyjones at gmail.com. Send me articles if you feel like it. Call the show 646-450-2012 if you have something to say. And uh, follow me on Instagram at funnyjones if you want to keep up with what's going on in my life or drop me a DM. You can send a, a link to a story in there as well. Yeah, pretty cool. Anyways, I love you very much and we'll uh, we'll talk tomorrow, okay? You doing anything tomorrow? Yeah, you got some time for me? All right, all right. All right, let's do this again tomorrow then, okay?